tailgaters, Ross of the Pigskin Tales podcast here. The buzz of summer and the anticipation of the college football season is in the air. It's the perfect time to gear up with Homefield, a premium collegiate apparel brand based in Indianapolis. They have over 150 plus college designs to choose from, each one showcasing a unique part of your team's history. My personal experience with Homefield has been exceptional. Their apparel is comfortable and their vintage designs bring back fond memories of my alma mater. So as the excitement for the upcoming college football season builds, make sure to visit Homefield's website at homefieldapparel.com. Get ready today for the upcoming season and represent our favorite teams in style with Homefield. Again, that's homefieldapparel.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hi, folks. Uh, This is your host, Joe Zagorski, talking to you about pro football in the 1970s. And the topic in this episode is Lawrence McCutcheon and the 1975 postseason. The featured halfback for the Los Angeles Rams in 1975 was Lawrence McCutcheon, a runner who delivered the unabashed punch of a fullback with the speed and the shifty moves of a quality halfback. During the regular season that year, McCutcheon had rushed for a total of 911 yards, which was kind of a regression from the 1,097 yards that he gained in 1973 and the 1,109 yards that he gained in 1974. Despite his falling short of the 1,000-yard plateau in 1975, the Rams still managed to win the NFC Western Division title with an impressive 12-2 record. Los Angeles head coach Chuck Knox had to rely mostly on McCutcheon in the first round of the 1975 divisional playoffs. This was due primarily because Knox's quarterback situation still had not been resolved. Knox vacillated between James Harris and Ron Jaworski to be his starting signal caller, especially as the 1975 regular season neared its end. The 1975 NFC Divisional Playoffs featured the St. Louis Cardinals visiting the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum to play the Rams. Now the Rams at first tried to focus on using their ground attack. It was the age-old adage of keep using it until your opponent shows that they are able to stop it or at least slow it down. The Cardinals were never really able to stop or slow down Lawrence McCutcheon, however. The young Rams tailback carried the ball a total of 37 times for 202 yards against the St. Louis Cardinals, including over 50 yards in Los Angeles' first series of the game. The Cardinals' defense was not surprised by Coach Knox using McCutcheon so much in this game. They knew that he was their main weapon, but despite their best efforts, they were unable to slow him down. Now, once Ron Jaworski saw the majority of the St. Louis' defensive attention was focused on the Rams' running game, uh, the young quarterback began throwing the ball more often. Jaworski would complete almost half of his passes in the game for 203 yards and one touchdown, that coming on of a 66-yard bomb to Harold Jackson. Los Angeles owned a 28-9 lead at halftime, and despite a spirited Cardinals comeback, the Rams coasted during the remainder of the game to post a 35-23 victory. Now flash forward for a week. While Lawrence McCutcheon would gain a great amount of yardage in his team's divisional playoff game against St. Louis, he would discover that such would not be the case the following week in the 1975 NFC Championship game against the Cinderella team of that conference in that year, the Dallas Cowboys. In that game, James Harris would be starting at quarterback for the Rams, not Jaworski, and their game plan would be the same as it was versus the Cardinals simply to give McCutcheon the ball right from the outset. He was, after all, a catalyst who made things go for the Rams' offense in the previous playoff game. But Dallas had a much better and a much stronger defense than St. Louis did, however, and their results were staggering, to say the least. McCutcheon gained exactly zero yards 
in his first three carries. The Dallas Doomsday defense practically destroyed the Los Angeles ground game and uh, McCutcheon with it. He only carried the ball a total of 11 times in the whole game, and he could gain only a meager total of 10 yards. That's not a lot of yards for a guy that was just used to running over 200 yards the previous week. It seemed that practically every time that McCutcheon got a handoff, a Cowboys defender was already at least had one arm on his jersey in the Rams' backfield. That was impressive for anyone who loves watching defensive football to see. It did not take too long for Coach Knox to have James Harris ignore his running game and instead try to throw the ball. Los Angeles was just not gaining anything on the ground that day. The whole Rams team could rush for a grand total of just 22 yards in that 75 NFC title game. With a statistic like that, it's no wonder that Dallas gave up only one touchdown to the Rams all game long. The Cowboys' 37-7 route of the Rams in the 1975 NFC Championship game was not really the fault of Lawrence McCutcheon. He had a great playoff game versus the Cardinals. Dallas head coach Tom Landry noticed that, and he left no stone unturned in having his defense focus all of their attention on McCutcheon in the week-long preparation for the title game versus the Rams. It is very tough for any running back in NFL history to put together great yardage totals in two straight playoff games. Lawrence McCutcheon was just a case in point of that fact. Now for the trivia question for this episode, who was the Rams running back who scored the only Los Angeles touchdown in the 1975 championship game? Again, thanks a lot for listening to uh, our our, uh, podcast, Pro Football in the 1970s. I'm your host, Joe Zagorski, and we'll be back uh, next time with another interesting chapter in pro football during the 1970s. Take care. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. Hope you enjoyed another nostalgic episode here on the Sports History Network. By now, you've heard us rave about two books, The Golf Round I'll Never Forget and NBA 75, The Definitive History. Have you snagged your copies yet? If so... Well, we applaud you for great taste. But if you haven't, well, listen up. Because our generous partners over at Firefly Books are giving away a free copy of each book to one of our dedicated fans. To enter the giveaway for your chance at winning one of these awesome books, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash giveaways. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash giveaways. Good luck. And remember, you can come back daily to earn more entries.